Amen. And so we started this series and we've been talking about marriage and God has been talking to, talking to us about uh, the structure of marriage, you know, um, and uh, it's been eye-opening so far. Can I get a witness? Is that it? Yeah. Uh, because God wants us to get everything right. We are the finishing generation. So he wants us to get our marriages right. And he wants us to be also be able to fortify our marriages against the storms of life. Because like I said, in the midst of this season, a lot of things will come. You know, if, if you look at what is happening right now, you will realize that even a lot of the marriages that are, you know, going through difficulties or even the ones that have collapsed and are collapsing, you realize that it's not, in some of the cases, it's not direct fault of the two people involved. And this is what I mean. There's so much pressure on the outside. There's so much pressure. Pressure in different ways and in different forms. And then sometimes that pressure then tests people's patience. And so ordinarily the things that they ought to be able to put up with, because there's so much tension and pressure on the outside, you know, the people are falling apart themselves. And I'm saying this to say that it is very important for us to continue to build our internal structures, both in our individual lives and our marriage. It's very important. Because there will be storms, and the storms of life will increase. The waves of life will increase because we're in the midst of crisis, people. We're in the midst of crisis. And so you can be here, and you can say, oh, my marriage is fine, my marriage is fine. Yes, I bless God for that. But can you prepare for the future? One of the things I have learned about life is that challenges of life are in what? In grades. <laughs> Who understands what I'm talking about? you realize that the challenges that you put up with in your home in the previous season will be different from the one that will come in the new season. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And that's why you have to prepare for the future. So when we say put structures in your home, it's not just for what is working. It's also for what is coming. So you don't just sit and say, okay, I'm fine. You know, I'm not having all these issues that pastor is talking about. That's not, don't, don't maintain that posture. Even the things that are working, you need to what? strengthen them. The Bible says that you better strengthen the things that are working in your midst quickly before I will come and take away your lamp. So even when certain things and structures are working, you strengthen them. Certain structures that have become old, you remove them. You renew the internal workings and the structures of your marriage from time to time. Because you think that the impact what comes at your marriage is your spouse. Your spouse is not the only influence on your marriage. The economy affects your marriage. Do you understand what I'm saying? The economy, the political system affects your marriage. There are certain influences, external influences that you, you may not pay attention to that affect your marriage. You think that man that comes into the house and he carries his nose up, do you think he, he, wants, he, he chooses to, he wants to carry his nose up? Do you think that man that comes into the house and is angry at everybody, you think he just wants to be angry at everybody? Life is dealing with him outside. Life is dealing with him outside. And so that is why we have to continue to reinforce the structures of our home. Because you don't know the nature of the crisis that is coming ahead. Right now, with the falling of Naira and everything that is happening right now, if you had 10 million Naira in the bank yesterday or last month, how much do you think your 10 million is worth today? And, but that's the reality. It may not be exactly 2K, but it, that's the reality. It's not, worth, it's not longer worth 10 million naira. So this loving, caring man will think about that and he comes in and a lot of the projections he has made, he's no longer able to meet up. I work in an organization that is helping to manage grants. And so, we gave out grants to some organizations. The last time we met, one of the things they complained about, they said their budget is no longer budgeting. And it makes so much sense because everything they budgeted in their programming, all their projects, is no longer like that in the market. So, what I'm saying is this. The reason why you have to build your marriage is not just because of him or her. There are external forces that will be impacting your... You understand what I'm saying? That's why I said they will come... See, these external things will come for your joy. These things will come for your peace. So it's not the woman or the man that you think is only the bad person in your life. No. There are extra, and, and it's the nature of the world. Crisis will precede our exit. So the kind of fortification that God is putting in us in this season is unprecedented. 
And the reason why God is insisting that we build our lives, that we renew the structures of our lives, that we align with him, that we do all of the things he's taking us through in TF Church, is for the crisis that is what I had. It's for the crisis that I had. Because the nature of challenges that the world will throw up tomorrow will be different from the ones we've been grappling with prior. And do you know, let me tell you this, for us, the finishing generation, God doesn't just want us to get by in life. That is, where, that is why God is doing what he's doing in us. Just you know what I'm saying? God doesn't just want us to manage. He wants us to thrive. And so if you're going to thrive in the midst of crisis, then the processing of your inner man has to be different. It has to be different. You can't, you can't be in a church where everything they are doing is just, you know, just using cream to rub your body and you're feeling good. No. You have to pay attention. To the quality of your inner man. It's very important. Because that is what will keep you safe and secure. And not only that, that is what will help you arise and shine. When others are complaining, when others are having issues, they will come to you and say, please, how are you doing it? How are you doing it? How are you doing it? How are you able to manage? You will see two people earning the same thing. But one person is more at peace. But the other one is always complaining. And yet they're in the same office. And yet they are married with two children each. And then they will come and say, please, how are you doing it? I'm not a, God is my sustainer. So. And then you now go, apart from God, be my sustainer. Because we must be able to explain the nature of grace that is working in our lives. So please, one of the ways you will bless people in the midst of the last days. Don't just hide everything under God's grace. No, explain it. Unpack the grace. It is the process of unpacking the grace that you will be able to make sense. See, they, they will be able to make sense of your God. If you just put everything vaguely, God's grace, they can't touch it. It puts you in a, another realm from where they are. So, but when you have conversation like, ah, it's God's grace. So, however, I have a supporting wife. My wife does not give me trouble. She also works. And from what she earns, she takes care of the house. That is why you say, I'm able to come to work every day. I'm smiling. I'm not under any pressure, you know. And then before you know, you start talking. Say, yes, you know, she's a believer. She, she loves God. And so we have an understanding. The Bible is the final authority of our home. And then from there, that, can, that person can become interested in what you have to say. And then you can talk to the person about God. Hallelujah. And if you realize that these people are not going to where they are being fed, you can then invite them, invite them and say, maybe you should come just check out my community. Come see the nature of marriages that are being raised in my community. Because, you see, like I said to us last week, if the two people in a marriage are growing, that marriage will work. If the two people in a marriage are growing spiritually, that marriage will work. Because the man is becoming like Christ. The woman is becoming like Christ. Is this the marriage that will not become like Christ? One of the reasons marriages in the church today are falling apart is because people are not growing anymore. People are not growing spiritually anymore. People are just getting excited in church. And shouting hallelujah. And they're misbehaving. That's it. But there is no way the man is becoming like Christ. The woman is becoming like Christ. And that home we not validate God. No way, no way, no way. And so that's what I'm saying. The last days, the church of the last days, you can't have this for of It's not happen. Because when both parties are fully submitted to the principles and the values of the kingdom, that home will work. It is when one person is doing stubborn head. It is when one, one person is not fully submitted. If the man is submitted to Christ and the woman is submitted to the man, that marriage will work. If you follow divine order, that marriage will work. If you contest the divine order, it's heading for a crisis. But if you follow divine order, the man, you submit to Christ. And the woman, submit to the man, that marriage will work. And so God is reminding us of all of these principles. And he said, put them in place in your home. For those of us who are married, reinforce those structures of your home. Reinforce them. For those of you who are single, you're looking at getting married. Start putting those structures in place in your own life. And start praying for your marriage. And start praying for your spouse. And don't settle for less. For the singles. And don't let pressure make you settle for less. I beg you. Don't let pressure make you what? Settle for less. Because you are the one that will live in that marriage. Not your parents. Not your friends. You are the one that will live in that marriage. Hallelujah. And so that is why God is talking to us about marriage in this season. So I want us to situate this series on marriage within the context of God strengthening our core structure to be able to withstand the storms of life. To be able to withstand what is coming. Because what God always, what God does always, that I love God for, is that he will always prepare his people for what lies ahead. Always. The challenge with us most of the time is that we're not in alignment with him. So we don't even know when he's warning us. 
That's why I said it. Everything that's happening in the world today, for the past 30 years, God has been wanting the church. For the bulk of the church, we're just having a great time. Just having a great time. And we're not preparing. And you don't prepare for war when the war is at your doorstep. You prepare for war in the time of peace. You prepare for war in the time of peace. And so what God is doing right now is that he's preparing us again, not just for today. <laughs> he's preparing us again for the future that is coming upon us. And that is why since I've been saved, since I've been in the Reformation, I've never taken the word of God for granted. Not for us. I'm serious. That's why I'm always on the edge of my seat because I know that every time I come before him, he has something for me. So I take everything very seriously. That's me. If I have chosen that this is my pastor, if I have chosen that this is my community, if God has led me, not I, not that I just choosing, if God has led me that this is my community, this is my safe space, I'm serious. I don't, I don't take anything for granted. I don't second guess. And it's not that I don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead me. I just trust that if God himself has led me here, then I'm, everything that flows from this, this platform is for me. That's how I've lived for the past 20 years. And that has produced consistent growth in my life. And so I want to encourage us. You see, I want to say this. You see, you see, this life that we are living is not hard. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not hard. That is why all of us who are saved here. I want you to be joyful. Be, be, be happy. Don't, don't live as though you carry the weight of the world. You can't carry more burden than Jesus. See, this Christian work is not hard. It's not hard to design the voice of God. Do you know what influences us and just damages us as people? It's our flesh and self. See, if you can prioritize putting flesh and self under, trust me, knowing the will of God concerning every area of your life, you just come seamlessly. Seamlessly. See, this work is not hard. At all. And so you won't be pressured to do the wrong things. You won't be pressured to take the wrong steps. You won't be pressured to make the wrong, you know, alliances and find yourself in the wrong. You won't be pressured. It will be seamless. Hallelujah. I don't know why I went into this dimension now, but let's see. So today we're looking at the wild wind and the rocket launcher. Can you say that? The wild wind and the rocket launcher. And so the point is this in every marriage, not every marriage, not every marriage, in marriages, it's either you are a whirlwind or you are a rocket launcher. It's either you are a whirlwind or you are a rocket launcher. While this applies to both men and women, I am going to be speaking more in the direction of women. And so our women, both married and singles, please open your hearts. The reason is that women, like I said last week, wield the greatest influence in marriage. Women, they have the greatest influence in marriage. That's why this applies to them more. Women are powerful. Trust. It may not look like it. Some of them may deny it. But from what I have seen, growing up for four decades, I have seen that women are powerful. That is the truth. Women have influential, highly influential. And so that influence can either be deployed as a rocket launcher or it can be deployed as what? As a wild wind. If you look at both, something is propelling something, right? You can see that it's similar. It's like this energy. Energy, powerful energy, driving something. If you want to know how powerful wild wind is, look at those tornadoes. I mean, a tornado can ravage an entire city in minutes. In what? In minutes. Wild wind can ravage an entire city in minutes. It's that powerful. And that is what some people represent in their marriage. While others represent rocket launcher in their marriage. Remember what we read, Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. NLT says, Then he said to the woman, God said to the woman, after the act of disobedience, the cause for the woman is that I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. And he said, And you will desire to control your husband, but he will do what? He will rule over you. That's why I said, Innate in every woman is the propensity for control. You can deny it. Trust me, it's there. In it in every woman is the propensity for control. It's there. And that's what God's actually asking women to submit. If that thing were not there, God would not say women should submit. Because it's when you have something powerful, that's when you let it go. When you are powerful, that's when you are required to what? To let go. And so, talking about control, and I said last week, I said, the, he said the, the man will do what we rule over you. And that's why we see the, the traditional man wants to rule over the wife. It's also the cause. It's a response to the to the control. is response. is natural response. It's, it's falliness for a man to want to subjugate the woman. It's, it's falliness. It's falliness. It's, it's actually, if you go, go back, it's smallness. Are you guys getting it? It's smallness that wants to make man to overpower and subjugate the woman. It's smallness deep down. 
And so he now wants to use the stronger, because he has stronger muscle, you know, to dominate the woman. It's smallness. It's small men that hate their wives. So you think they are powerful? No. It's a manifestation of their smallness. It's a manifestation of smallness. So it's still the cause. You will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. What is control? And it's important to look at this. When you want to control everything around you, you will barely have peace. Think about it. I'm serious. And this applies to everybody. And remember what I've said in this series, that we'll be looking at certain principles, but these principles are not only applied to what? To marriage. They also apply to other areas of life. So your ability to be able to deduce how this principle that we are sharing in relation to marriage apply to other areas of your life will help you make the most of this teaching. Let me give you an example. I used to be someone who, I, was, I used to be very poor in delegating roles and giving assignments. Because somehow, I just felt like people won't do it the way I want them to do it. You get it, right? And because of that, what do you do? You want to do everything. Huh? And when you want to do everything, you will never be happy. You are always under what? Pressure. The assignment you ought to give people to relax, you are carrying on your head. That's when it then looks as if the entire burden of the organization is on your head. Because you are not what? You are not delegating. So that's what I'm saying. Control. That's what control does. You can't have both control and peace together. You can't. You can't want to be in control and then have peace. It doesn't work. For you to have peace, you must lose control. You must do what? Let go of control. Let go of control. And so when we traveled, I had my first experience. The last time we traveled, I had my first experience of electric cars. And it was a really nice one. It was a Mustang, Mark IV, or Mark E, as it is called. SUV. Ford Mustang. So he picked us and then we would drive. Sometime once in a while when he's tired, he would do what? He would just leave the steering. And he would do one or two things. <laughs> he would just leave the steering. And he would just do it because he would just be driving itself. And he would be able to do what? He would drink water. Do you know? That's what I said. When you leave control, you do what? You have peace. <laughs> because the car has been tested. The technology has been tested. It works. He has tried it severally. He has tried it severally. When the car is supposed to stop, the car will stop. You are not wanting, hey, let me. No, 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 no. When it's nearing another car, it will slow down by itself. You have peace. You leave control. This is control. When you leave it, you have what? And that is a life God has called us to live. So if you try to control everything, you will lose your peace. If you try to control everything, the same thing in marriage. If you're in marriage and you're controlling, you won't have peace. You will always appear as though the, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Can you let go? Can you let go? Can you let go? Let go. And so, like I said, I'm speaking to women in particular. Women who are controlling, they rarely enjoy life. They don't have time to enjoy. They don't even have time to enjoy their children. They don't have time to enjoy their husband. I'm serious. Because in their head, there's always something to control. They want to control the mood. They want to control what everybody is thinking. They want to control what everybody is doing. They want to control what everybody is acting. They want to... you, you can't enjoy life like that. You're carrying too much. You're carrying too much. Because you can't have both. You must let go. And trust the structure. Trust your husband. Trust the systems he has put around you. And when you see them, it's like all the problems of the world on their shoulders. Can barely smile. Barely laugh. Barely hang out. Because they're controlling everything. Another thing about that is that they are quick to make decisions without recourse to their husbands. They are quick. You see them very quick to make decisions without recourse to their husbands. They don't submit their decisions to their husbands. Even when they communicate such a decision, it is with a tone of finality. So it's more like informing. The decision would have been taken. So I'm just informing you. It's not submitting it. That's what happens with control. He said you will desire to control your husband. That's how it manifests. Another characteristic of control is that they, they have issues with authority figures. Even outside the home. They do. They have issues with what? Authority figures even outside the home. Sometimes with their bosses in the office. That's because that authority figure has assumed that control. So they struggle with it. Because they want to be the one to be control, be in charge. They take the pace at which certain things happen. And so when that is not happening, they are agitated. They are agitated. They are, you understand? And then they complain. and They have a lot of things to complain about. Why? They love to control. So they have issues with authority figures, even outside the home. They also will find it difficult to get along with other women. And they rarely have close friends. 
Because they want to control everybody's mood. They want to control everything. They want to control when they go out. They want to control. But you see people who lose control. You see that they blend in a lot with others. Do you know what it means to be in unity? Like I said, unity, what, what does unity mean for you to be united and come together? You have to let go of control. You have to let go of being in charge. To blend with other people, you have to let go. If you want to control everything, you can't blend with other people. You will talk down on people. You will put them down because you want to be in control. And you may not mean to be that rude. You may not mean to be rude. That may not be your intention. But because there's just something about you that wants to be in charge and someone else is trying to take that away from you, you will want to assert yourself. Because you feel threatened that someone wants to take that power from you. You then do what? You assert yourself. And then before you know, the pitch of your voice goes up. Before you know, before the person says two, you have said three. You want to be in charge. And that's why you want to win every argument. You want to win every argument. You want to come out on top of every argument. And I'm not saying this, if you're here, you're a woman and you married a very quiet man. That the man is quiet and is letting you have your way does not mean you are right. Oh. I want you to hold this. That the man is quiet and is letting you have your way. It doesn't mean you are always right. He just can't deal. He just can't deal. Right. Okay. Yes. Let's do Okay, yes. Before you say, say yes. He, he can't deal. Because he won't win. He won't win with you. So you won't start. And I stand here to say this. I have seen examples of women unknowingly, unknowingly, I'm not saying intentionally, wreck their partners and their home because of that. And I've said this to you before, and I'll say it again. Even when the decision your husband is asking you to make is not the accurate one, and you're right as a woman, but you choose to submit, God will honor you for it. Can I get an amen? Do you know what you're doing? You are demonstrating to God that you submit to the structure he has put in place. And anytime you walk in obedience, God honors it. As a matter of fact, God can save that marriage and that family because of your honor for the structure. God can say, my daughter, you can see. And then he will then corner the man somewhere and give him koboko because of you. You are not the one to flog the man. God will, God will handle it. So when God wants to, God will now carry the man to one corner. And see, bam, your wife was right. Why did you? Sometimes that decision will go wrong and God will come and say, Can you see? She was right. And then will, if the man will come and eat the what? The humble pie. If he's really humble. And they will come, I'm sorry, babe. I think I will learn to listen to you more. You see, that kind of influence, the influence you attain from submission is better. That influence you want to what? Force. The influence you attain from, will, from submission is better than the one you want to what? First, the husband will fight it in some cases. And so know how to manage your influence as a woman. And as a man as well, it applies. Do not manipulate your wives. Do not manipulate your wives. Do not cage your wives. Another thing about women who like to control is they find it difficult to follow. And they would rather boss people around. If they are not leading the process, their participation will be minimal. They want to be in charge. Is that thing? They want to be in charge. If they are not the one in control, they will be on the sidelines. But the moment they are in control, they will take charge. And those people can be very, have a lot of energy. But because of that control, they find it difficult to follow. The greatest danger of control is that the still small voice of the Holy Spirit is often neglected. Please, write this down. The greatest danger of control is that the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, of what? Is often neglected. You won't even know when the still small voice said, ah, calm down, listen here. Man, no, no, this your position is not right. But because there's that thing in them that want to say three before you can say one, that thing has jumped ahead. Bah, 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 bah. And so they can't, so it now takes settling down to think about decisions they're about to make and to reflect again and again sometimes can be difficult. So it's often neglect that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. So let me quickly move. Maybe it's the rocket launcher that we'll be able to look at today. And the features of rocket launcher, and then we'll look at the wild wind uh, on Wednesday, on next week. Proverbs chapter 31. So let's look at the rocket launcher. Proverbs 31, verses 10, 11, and 12 says, A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has what? Full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. So, because of her, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She brings who good? The husband. She brings him good, not harm, 
all the days of her life. The message translation says, a woman, a good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts her without reserve. Her husband does what? Trust her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. Never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. Verse 23 of that same passage says, her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. So in the city gate, her husband is what? Is respected because of the wife. So you can see that, you can see how powerful women are. You see that, you see, that's why we have to honor our wives. Because of what she has potential to do for us. All the married men in the house, can you wait? We have to what? Honor our wives. We have to treat them well. Because they, they, they carry such power that is able to propel us into our destiny. We must honor them. We must treat them right. So when you read this scripture, you should be looking at it the other way around. And say, how do I nurture this kind of a woman? How do I treat this kind of a woman? How do I ensure I do not take this kind of a woman for granted? This woman that is mindful of me, mindful of my well-being, mindful, takes away pressure, even at that. How do I ensure she's protected? So we also have a responsibility. And we have a huge responsibility as men towards our wives. What are the features of a rocket launcher? Can you see that? That's it. That's what rocket launcher. That's rocket launcher. That's it. It's propelling it. It's taking it to the Hobbit. Number one, stability. It provides what? Stability. Can you see? It's moving, but it's what? It's stable. It's moving, yet stable. Any relationship where both are like this, there will be stability in the life of that woman. There will be stability in the life of that man. And there will be stability in that home. But the reason I see pointing at women is because they carry the most influence. And so I want you to know to harness your influence. I want our women, harness what? Your influence. Harness your power. Direct your power. See, put your, you, you have that power. Trust me, you do. So what you need to do now is to put that power in a way that it produces what it ought to produce. That's what we're talking about. So harness it well. Harness it well. So there's stability. Even though it's moving up, it's stable. Another feature of a record launcher is that it has direction. It has direction. So right now, from the programming of this rocket, you already know where it's going. As a matter of fact, if you look at the control room, the way it will move, the cause of this has already been designed. And the speed at which it will move and where it will attain, everything as what has been predicted. So it has a direction. It, it, see, the people that launched this, they know where this rocket launcher is taking that rocket to. They know where it's taking it to. And you know what will happen? It will take it to where it ought to take it to. It won't deviate. A rocket launcher of a woman is direction. Another thing that you see is support. It provides support. It provides support. From those two components, which one do you think is the rocket launcher? The bigger one or the small one? Oh, you guys are not looking. Look again. Look again. Which is the rocket launcher? The bigger one. The bigger one is launching the small one. The bigger one is actually the rocket launcher. Can you see where that fire is coming from? That's the power. The rocket itself is this to the left, as you know, from where you are, right? Attaching itself to what? To the launcher. So the bigger one is the launcher. The small one is the rocket. The most powerful in the marriage is the woman. You can debate it. You can deny it. You can, it does nothing. That's what it is. The most powerful in the marriage is the woman. What women endure, no man can endure. What women go through and put up with, no man can put up with. Why do you think it's very easy once the woman cheats, it's very easy for the man to say, I know they do again. And the society will support. And then yet... The woman will put up. The woman will what? Forgive. See, the thing that they have, capacity to forgive, capacity to bear, no man has it. I'm serious. No man has it. Is it to conceive, carry that pregnancy for nine months, find it difficult to sleep at night? I watch my wife. That's why I say, God, I don't want her to go through this more than twice. Kill her day. For months, you won't be able to sleep. Now, if she wants to sleep, by the time when the pregnancy is really out, she wants to stay here for hours. And then if she wants to move again, she will then move strategically to the other side and stay there for hours. Then the man, 
<laughs> I mean, you can put your leg anywhere, put your... But this woman is sleeping for hours in the same position. Do you think we have the capacity as men? We don't. We don't. So I want our women to understand how powerful they are. But the conversation here is how to deploy that power and how not to deploy it. But to talk about you, your, your, your makeup, my goodness, women are powerful. Women are powerful. The rocket, the, the launcher, can you see that? It's bigger than the rocket. The Bible says what we just read in verse 23 of Proverbs 31, he said the man is respected amongst the elders at the gate on the account of his wife. See, if your wife gives you trouble, you can't sit down at the gate. You won't even have time to sit down at the gate. It does not make the home peaceable for you. You think you have time to go and be deliberating, deliberating at the gate? No, no. Women are powerful. That's why sometimes you see some men say, I would rather just go to the joint and just go hang out with the guys. What's chasing them? The women. Women are powerful. If they deploy like this, men, you will achieve stuff. They deploy their power like this. My goodness. You see that man. Yes, the man may be the one on TV. Shiny tate, everybody is taking pictures, but you'll be sure. You see that saying behind every man, there's a it's so true. It's so 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 true. There's one woman that is behind, supporting, praying for. And there are certain things that women do that men don't even know. When women are not aware of, they're praying. So women are powerful. That's what happens. So the energy, the power, everything, what is powering that rocket is the launcher, propelling it to a defined destination. This is where we are going. The woman will power you there if she chooses to. Another thing is that it, it propels in a steady manner without disrupting what is being propelled. Can you see? There's so much fire. There's so much fire. There's so much smoke. There's so much. But that thing that the launcher is carrying is secured. Woman, you're powerful. Use your power to secure your husband. You're powerful. Use it to bring stability to him. Direction. Another thing, when I say stability and direction, do you know something? Naturally, women are intuitive. That's why I want to do certain things. I want to take certain steps, certain business daily. Consult with your wife. It doesn't make you weak. It makes you wise. Because sometimes there are things men don't see that women see. And when women start warning you about certain companies and certain friends, listen. When your wife starts complaining about certain influence around you, please listen. As a man, listen. Most of the time, there are things they see that you don't see. All of this put together is part of the power that women have. So it's either the power put together is used like this or it is used and deployed as what? A wild wind. So I want our women to deploy their power in a good way. So I want, let me just quickly round off this. The wild wind, very quickly, I don't want to break it. Proverbs 21, verses 15 and 16. The wild wind. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as constant dripping on a rainy day. Have you heard that? Can you imagine just putting a bucket by the side and you're just saying, to, 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 to. Do you know how annoying it can be when you want to concentrate? <laughs> I mean, you can't concentrate. To, to. Please, can someone just remove that bucket? Can that, can that water just touch ground in peace and just not be making that noise? That's what the Bible is describing here. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as, as constant dripping on a rainy day. Stopping her complaint is like trying to stop the wind. Or... Trying to hold something with greased hands. So stopping her complaint is like trying to stop the wind. Can't stop the wind. Can't stop the wind. That's why the Bible chose to use wind as an example of a woman that is not deploying her power properly. It's like trying to stop the wind. You can't stop the wind. The wind will do what it wants to do. The wind will go where it wants to go. That's the wind. You can't stop the wind. You can't control the wind. The wind is in control of itself. Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, The wise woman builds a house... But with our own hands, the foolish one tears her down. Tears her down. And this does not mean every home that is broken is the woman's fault. Too. That's not what the scripture is saying. This only speaks to the power the woman has. So when you hear a scripture like this, in Proverbs 14, 1, about the wise woman building a house, it's also speaking about the power that women have. That even though you are a man in that house, that woman can bring that house down. Even though you are a man in that house, that woman can build that house up. She just got the power. She's got the influence. Features of a wild wind. Very quickly. Can we see the wild wind? Can you see that as an example of a wild wind? It's unstable. It's unstable. There is no targeted direction. It's just going anywhere. Sometimes you can see a wild wind and it looks like it's going this way. But if you don't, sometimes when you see wild wind, you don't even know where to run. Because you don't know where it's coming to next. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't know where it's, 
And can you see the small, small ones around us? Who has expressed small, small wild wings? When you stand, I say, he's going this way. And before you know, he's coming to you. <laughs> and you can't even run because if you say, you go this way, it might meet you there. If you say this way, because you can't even tell where the wild wind is going. It's unstable. It's unstable. No, ta- no targeted direction. It's here today and there tomorrow. It's this today and that tomorrow. There is no targeted direction. And if that woman is in charge of the home, that's what the home will experience. Here today, that tomorrow, this emphasis, no targeted direction. It's wild wind. And she's deploying that power as such. And then it disrupts whatever it carries. It disrupts whatever it carries. Anything it touches, it carries that car, that car will not remain the same. Is this wild wind carries that car? It will not remain the same. It will disrupt it. No stability. No direction. It tears down rather than build. That's what it does. And some men are like this as well. Some men, they subject their families to this. Sometimes I, I see men who are not stable. It breaks my heart. And some of these people, they don't even have integrity. And when I look at some of them, some of them have seen a lot of Christians who claim to know God and they claim to be spiritual. But because there's just something on the inside of them that is like wild wind, you can't even take their word to the bank. I'm serious. They are here today, they are there tomorrow. They are there tomorrow. I'm like, why is this man doing this family like this? Why not just create stability for your home? And when you see them, honestly, I, I've, seen, I've seen things, guys. Honestly, I've seen things. And sometimes I don't know how to help them. Sometimes I'm just helpless. So some men are like, why are we? And because the, 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 in this case, like you are the man, then it affects the entire family, it affects the children. I'm sorry to say, it then looks like uh, people who are in service, like the police. That's what it looks like. For men who are like, why are we? They are not in the police force, but they are here today, they are there tomorrow, so their children are even lost. They don't even know what to do. Their children are going to be changing schools because they are moving places. There's no stability. There's no predetermined destination. There's no direction. There's no secret. Once we remain in, on this path, this is where we are coming to. Because you can't tell the direction it will shift to tomorrow. That's why I went. You can't tell. You can't tell. And so some men are like this as well. So for men, you must be able to provide stability for your home. It's very, very important. Hallelujah. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. The portrait of the rocket launcher. The portrait of the rocket launcher. Proverbs chapter 31 from verse 1. Can I get an amen? That is a portrait of the rocket launcher. A good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. Never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. She shops around for the best yarns and cuttings and enjoys knitting and sewing. She's like a trading ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exo- exotic prizes. Surprises. She's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it. Then with money, she puts aside, plants a garden. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, Eager to get started, she senses the rock of her work. She senses the worth of her work. Is in no hurry to call it quit for the day. She is skilled in the craft of home and of diligent in homemaking. She is quick to assist anyone in need. Reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful linens and skills and seals. She, her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them, brings the sweaters she needs to the dress shops. Her clothes as well, are well made and elegant and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. She always what? Faces tomorrow with what? With a smile. In all of these, she still has time to what? To smile. But the one that controls, no time to smile. No time to smile. She still smiles. She has time to smile. Where am I? She keeps an eye. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. She always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her household. And she keeps them all busy and what? Productive. She keeps everybody productive, including the man. (laughs) She keeps the man productive. She helps the man to be productive. Her children respect her and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you outclassed them all. Charm can be be mislead. And beauty soon fades. 
The woman to be admired and praised is a woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she desires. Adorn her life with praises. Hallelujah. This is a portrait of a rocket launcher. This is what it looks like. There's something my wife now says that gladdens my heart. And I'm like, this is really interesting. She said that she wants to be that woman that can buy her husband a car. Can I get an email? And she said, and you know what she's doing? She's actually working towards it. She's actually working towards it. That she wants to be that woman that can actually buy her husband a car. And if you look at what we describe about the woman, about how she takes her work and about how diligent she is, she's this woman who will buy her husband a house. I mean, she's already even doing so much, taking care of the entire house. And she wants to be that woman that buys her husband a car. So that's a portrait of a rocket launcher. Hallelujah. And so if you're here for all of us, I want us to rise to our feet. And I want us to pray. This might be sobering. Yes, it's good. Sometimes my wife will correct our children and they will cry. And my wife will say, yes, it's good to cry. Cry. When God talks to us and it's sobering, it's good to be sober. It's good to be sober. But the moment you know that this is the word of God, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. And when I read, when I read Proverbs 31, do you know what I see? I see power. I see ability. I see skill. I see, I see. Oh, that's what I see. I, that's what I see. And I want to say to all of us here, our women, do not run away from your identity. Do not run away from the capacity that God has built on the inside of you. Do not let society make you think, oh, why do I have to do this much? If God has given you that much power, then you do it. It's like a woman saying, why do I have to be the one carrying pregnancy? At least you have, have, brought, have brought three. Please, you man, come and carry two. That's what it's like. When God describes you like this, and then you are choosing to live less, it's like saying, you two, come and carry two of the babies. Since you want to have five, I've carried three. Come and, come and carry two. But God is saying, this is who you are. And God is saying, I've put so much on the inside of you. i put so much on Don't deny. Don't let society make your identity in God feel small or make submission feel weak. That is what society is teaching us today. That is what modernity is teaching us today. But there is power in it. There is power in it. The Bible has this to say about Christ. Even though he was God, he did not count it what robbery. That he had to come in form of flesh and he left his divine nature in heaven. It's a dimension of Christ. The woman is a dimension of Christ. And so when God, when the Bible says submit, it's a dimension of Christ. A sacrifice. I have the power. I have the influence. I can make you a dense man if I choose to. Yeah. A woman can make you dense as a man. But you now say, okay, because God said I should submit, I choose to submit it. And I choose to make that power propel you to your destination. It's a choice that the woman makes. As a man, you can't force her to make this choice. You can't force her. The Bible doesn't say you should force your wife to do anything. You can't force her. She has to do it herself. That's what, that's what God honors. Forced. Forced loyalty. Forced love. Forced submission. There is nothing that is forced that God honors. Forced offering. Manipulated offering. There is nothing that is manipulated by man that God honors. You can't manipulate loyalty. You can't force people to love you. You can't force people to be loyal to you. The moment you do that, God does not honor that. But when it comes willingly, even giving to God, God says, let it be done willingly. When you do it willingly, oh woman, God will honor you. And oh man, when you try to force it, God will, God will come for you. God will come for you. And so I want us to pray for ourselves. And this is for everybody. Oh, man, don't worry. In this light, I am coming for you. There will be sessions that will be dedicated to us. That's where we ask you, who is your wife today? Is she the same person when you married her? What is the output of her life on your account in her life as a man? What are the things your wife is now able to achieve because you are in her life? Because you are not overwhelming her with house chores. Because you are not overwhelming her with the things that she has to do in the home. At that moment when you say, babe, can you just hold back? Let me take care of these patients. 
Go and rest. Can you say, okay, let me just take care of this. Can you just, okay, go for that, your meeting. I'll take the girls out. I'll take them to go make their hair. Go to attend your meeting. As a man. Are there potentials in your wife that are locked in that you are not allowing to come to the surface because you are bugging her down? So as a rocket launcher, as a man as well, you can choose to be a record launcher. And the prayer I want us to pray right now is pray for all of us. Pray for yourself first and say, God, make me a rocket launcher. And you may have been doing this before, please, but still pray. If you don't pray, it becomes pride. But there's always room to do more. I want to be able to support my wife more than I'm doing right now. I want to be able to see a lot, a lot. There's so much that's on the inside of her. I want to see come out and bless the world. So I want to be a rocket launcher for my wife. And every man was desired to be a rocket launcher for their wives. But within the order that God himself has put in place. And every man, every woman must desire to be a rocket launcher for their husband. Because you are the most powerful in that relationship as a woman. You are the most powerful. Deploy your power the way God will have you deploy it. Deploy it the way God will have you deploy it. Deploy the way God will have you deploy it. Are you here and you like to be in control? It is time to let go. There are dimensions of God that he wants to begin to release into our home. If the order of our home is not in alignment with his word, he will withhold. There are dimensions of himself he wants to release into our lives. If there are certain structures in our lives that are not in alignment with his design, he will withhold those dimensions. Whatever you have today, there is more for you. Whatever you have received, whatever you have in different areas of your life, there is more. If you can align more. If you can align more. Both as an individual and as families. If you can align more. Even as a kingdom community, this is church. That's why God is asking us to align our structures as a church. And as we align more, God will release more of himself to us. So there are certain dimensions of God that God will withhold until the structures are together. Until what is asking us to build is in line with, it, with the original design. If it is not in line with the original design, those dimensions of God will not rest. They won't come. But in the last days, for us to arise and shine, we need to put these structures in place. So pray for yourself that you are a rocket launcher. If you love control, make commitment today that you are letting go of control. You have to choose to let it go. Your husband can't make you. You are powerful. A lot of the things he says yes to, it's not because he's actually yes. He just wants to keep the peace. He just wants to keep the peace. Let go of control. Honor the structure and watch God elevate you. Honor the structure and watch God honor and bless your home. Honor the structure and watch God carry weight on your behalf. Lose control for peace. Have peace, have peace, have peace, have peace. Have peace. Walking with God is not hard. Walking with God is not hard. Lay hold of peace. Let go of control. Lay hold of peace. Let go of control. You are here, you are single. Pray for yourself. That that is what you will be for your spouse. Pray for yourself that that is what you will be for your spouse. I pray for grace to love my wife more. I pray for grace to do better. I pray for grace to do better as a husband. It's not, it's a prayer I'm still praying. Because this is not the best God has for me. In my relationship with my wife, this is not the best. I pray for grace to love her more. So there's always room for improvement. Yes, I know you've been a fantastic wife. You've been a fantastic husband. Trust me, there's room for improvement. Trust me, there's room for more. And when you give them more, God will resource you. God will bless that home. God will come down in ways that will amaze you. Because God wants to make our homes his sanctuary. 
And for God to make our home his sanctuary, the order of our home, the structures of our home must align with divine order. It must align. And so, Father, we ask that you help us. Help us. And I want us to take a moment to pray and strengthen our spouses. If you're married, pray for your spouse right now. If you are trusting God for one, pray for him or her. If you are not married, pray for him or her. And send the prayer ahead. Send the prayer ahead. It works. It works. Pray ahead for your spouses. If you're married, pray. Rather than trying to force your wife to be something that you think she should be, no, pray for her. And love her to submission. You can't force her. She will fight back as well. And she will repurpose that energy against you. If you want her to use that energy and that power that she has to propel you to where you are going, you better nurture her and love her and care for her. You can't force her. Pray for her. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray. Pray. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We adore you, Father, for speaking to us. You have not only spoken to us, you have released life to us. You have released life to our homes. You have released life to our marriages. Father, we thank you for what you're going to be doing in our homes in the midst of the last days. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor, Father. We adore you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I see this and I hear this in my spirit. God is repositioning our homes. God is fortifying our marriages. And I see this and I hear this in my spirit. That as we align with the divine order in our marriage, as we put those structures in place and align, I see God, I see God's glory descending into our homes. And God's glory is his nature, is his character. And it comes with a lot of power and energy and force. It comes with loads of heavenly resources. And as you work together, husband, wife, you work together as a unit, agreeing on these things, on your roles and playing your roles, submitting, loving, and doing all of these. Because one of the scriptures that we have read in the course of this series is Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 10. He said, figure out what will please Christ and do it. God is helping us to figure out what will please Him. And as you do it in your marriage, there are certain things God will begin to do in your home that will astound you. There are certain things that God will do in your home. There's a resource that God will be bringing to your home that will amaze both of you. And you will ask yourself, where is this coming from? But you will know that God is honoring your home because of your alignment with his divine structure. Because anytime we build according to divine blueprint, God shows up. Anytime, whether you build your life as an individual, God will show up. When you build your marriage together, God will show up. Every time you build according to divine blueprint, God will show up. And I see God showing up for us now. In a new way. In a new way. In a new way. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We receive this with thanksgiving. We receive this with thanksgiving. Into our lives, into our homes. Oh, Father, our homes are sanctuaries. Our homes are houses of refuge. Houses of succor. 
a place of abundance, of provision, of your glory, of your power, of your anointing. In the name of Jesus, our homes are sanctuaries. We receive this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on now, let's rejoice. Amen.